Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming here today. My name is Deborah Weaver. I'm from the Westport River Watershed Alliance. Hi, Charlie. I just saw you sneaking in. Um, I'm hoping that you all will get some snacks back in the back of the room. Um, we have been working uh, for quite a few weeks together with the uh, Infrastructure Oversight Committee. I have a terrible time saying that. Um, I see. With, with the Buzzards Bay Coalition to kind of get the message out about this effort for sewer and water along Route 6. So thank you all for being here. And um, we're going to do a short presentation. We're going to, um, I thought we were going to hear from a resident, but she's not here today. Um, I know John Borden wanted to say um, a little something from the Shelf Fishing Commission. And, um, and I also wanted to recognize the various people who are here um, in their official roles. Um, Bob Daler from the Planning Board. Maury is from the Infrastructure Oversight Committee. Sean is from the Board of Select Persons. Um, Tanya is the Board of Health over there. Jim Whiten uh, from the Planning Board. And who else do I see? Um, um, and John Borden back here from the Shellfish Commission. I think that's everybody, but please, if there's anyone else that I didn't recognize, just wave your hand and I'll, I'll do that. So um, thank you all for being here, and I'm really glad that we've had a chance to kind of bring ourselves together as a community to talk about why this is an important effort at this time. Yeah? Cool. All right, so we're just gonna move on. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Corin Peterson with the Buzzards Bay Coalition. The Buzzards Bay Coalition, we're a nonprofit dedicated to the protection, restoration, and sustainable use of Buzzards Bay. We work from the town of Westport all the way over to the town of Falmouth and the Vineyard. So we work with 21 different communities around the Bay on the exact same issues that are facing Westport today. Um, and it, I'm really, really proud to be in Westport and working with the IOC and with the Watershed Alliance on this issue. And so the next slide we have is an interview that Deborah did with Senator Rodericks on this particular issue, and so we wanted to share it. notice a little um, canine in the background, <laughs> which was an unanticipated visitor during our filming of this of Senator Rogers. This issue of uh, providing water and sewer for uh, the Route 6 corridor has been the top of my priority list for, I want to say decades. 20 years, yeah. yeah. Um, just a little background, you know, uh, born and raised uh, myself as my dad before me in the north end of West Park, right around, right around Route 6. Um, we moved our business from Fall River to Route 6 in West Park in 1973. So 50 years ago, we made Route 6 our home for, for our business. And we've been talking about the need for expanded economic development opportunities. We've been talking about the need for ensuring that the residences, there's so many residential properties along the Route 6 corridors that have compromised drinking water, uh, the lots are so small, it's almost impossible to provide a septic system uh, that can adequately protect the drinking water wells on the same lot. And the real answer is to provide water and sewer along the Route 6 corridor. This proposal that we are hoping the voters will uh, vote yes on uh, would provide the main spine, the trunk line, right down Route 6 from the Fall River line all the way to, to Dartmouth. Uh, so that in the future we can uh, do neighborhoods and ensure that uh, whether the folks along, you know, Crane Street, the Berrimans, the Oz, you know, what we would call a railroad park, or what we would call Greenwood Park, or what we would call the Westport Factory neighborhood, that these, those neighborhoods can all tie in uh, to, uh, to the line. Uh, it'll provide additional uh, economic development opportunities that will that Westport really needs a tax revenue, and we would really prefer to have tax revenue come from commercial taxpayers than residential taxpayers. Um, and I hear all the time, you know, Route 6 is nothing but one big car lot. And it's true. Why? Because cars don't need water or sewer. Right. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, they just, it's the highest and best use of the land, considering the fact it doesn't have this infrastructure. It's really important now that we do this. You know, we have the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. There are trillions of dollars of 
infrastructure dollars here in Massachusetts. We need to take advantage of that. Um, billions of dollars in water mm -hmm. and sewer projects, uh, all into the state revolving fund. If we don't take it, if, here, if we don't take advantage of it here in Westport, the Cape is going to take it all. Because right. the Cape is, uh, the Cape is a decade ahead of us in preparing for this. I secured the largest opera appropriation uh, in the state, a million dollars cash for the town of Westport to do the design, the engineering, the permitting, to get the ball rolling. At the end of the day, it's going to be much less expensive for a homeowner to tie into a public water and sewer supply than it is to upgrade the septic system. And it's going to be much better for their health. They're going to have better quality water, better ensuring that the this, this septic uh, septic's waste is contained and is properly treated before it's discharged rather than going into the ground. So it's better for public health, it's better for the homeowners, it's less expensive in the long run for the homeowners. You know, this is not rocket science. We, Westport is in amongst the minority of communities that do not have public water right. and sewer. It's everywhere. So it's not redesigning the wheel. It's, you know, um, it's, it's, it's tried, it's true, it works. Fall River, um, that will be accepting the septic waste in their uh, wastewater treatment facility. Um, it was built with federal money. It was built with the intention of tying in regionally so it's prepared for it. Fall River has amongst the best water quality in the entire state, um, and there's an abundance of water. Many parts of the state, certainly many parts of the country, would die to have the quantity and quality of water that we have right here in the North Otago Pond. If I'm a homeowner and I'm looking to sell, uh, the first thing I know is that I'm going to have to upgrade my system to meet Title V. You know, nowadays it's thirty or fifty thousand dollars. Even when I do so. It's going to mean I'm probably going to have to have a raised system so you can have Mount Flushmore right. in, your back, in your backyard or your side yard. But we didn't even touch on the environmental benefits. The fact that a main feeder of the Westport River is the Bread and Cheese Brook. Right. The Bread and Cheese Brook runs right through. We all know it goes, well, you know, goes, it, floods, it floods regularly, right, across Route 6. Um, but the Bread and Cheese Brook flows right through there, picking up all the nutrients uh, off from road runoff, also from septic systems. Uh, uh, and cesspools throughout the corridor, and that all just feeds into Westport River. Right. And we, you know, that's our most precious natural resource. Like, most important asset uh, is people. Mm -hmm. Let's protect the people, let's protect their health, let's give them, ensure that they have good, clean water to drink, uh, that they, their properties are protected, uh, their investments in their homes are protected, and then the next most important natural uh, resource is the river. Let's ensure that's protected also. So just to follow up on that, um, the money that, that he first set aside, the million dollars, has paid for the um, design and engineering, which is done. So that's just something that you should know about. Um, the history of the project, uh, this project goes way back. Um, I think it, it, he's right, it's, people have been talking about it for over 20 years. Um, but most recently, the, the master plan um, of the town in 2016 really focused on the Route 6 corridor as being an opportunity for economic development. In 2019, we finally got the, the uh, money, uh, sorry, not the money, we finally got our TMDL, our total maximum daily load, which is the threshold that DEP sets in under which if we go over that level of nitrogen, we're not meeting their expectations. And we are still not where we should be for the total maximum daily load of nitrogen entering the river. Um, the town has also done a very comprehensive uh, water management plan that has guided all the activities that uh, are being sought, sought after and implemented. And um, in 2023, we all know that we kind of ducked, we ducked the bullet of, of um, Mass DEP when they came down with the idea that everyone in the coastal communities would have to have a denitrifying septic system, everyone. And these systems, as you all probably know, are t tremendously expensive. And um, if the town can 
come into compliance by doing other types of remediations that will spare us all from having to do that kind of septic upgrade across the board. Um, I don't think we've really avoided uh, DEP. I think we've just postponed DEP because they are working right now on the CAPE. The CAPE is addressing all these same issues that we are. Falmouth is putting in sewers. Um, other communities on the Cape are, are dealing with the same exact things that we're being faced with. So um, as Senator Roderick says, it's not rocket science. We've got to do something to come into compliance with the DEP regulations. Yeah, and just to, to underscore Deborah's point, um, the DEP regulations are real. They apply to Cape Cod. So while they don't apply to the town of Westport yet, they are um, being applied to the Cape. The town of Yarmouth just approved more than $200 million for expansion of sewer um, out on, on the Cape. Barnstable's sewer plan is over a billion dollars. Um, and so they're spending real money and they're taking advantage of that bipartisan infrastructure money that Senator Rodericks mentioned um, in his interview. So um, what is question one? This is um, one of the things that I learned actually from going to various meetings is that, that in the, um, the town ballot, we can't s recite exactly how much money is going to be um, requested. And I'm not sure why that is. Maybe somebody else knows the answer. It's because only the town meeting can appropriate uh, money that the taxpayers pay. Okay. Um, so the real question, I think, boils down to the simple, simple question of can the town borrow money in order to make this project take place. And when we say borrow money, it means that it will be a time limited amount of money that is being requested. And when the money is paid off over time, the taxes will not bear that cost. So let's say it's a 20 year loan, your taxes would go up for 20 years. And then at the end of the payoff of that time period, the taxes would not continue to go. Um, and I just want to just explain what we're looking at in the, the map of the project. The red line, who knew Route 6 was that straight, like yeah. legitimately <laughs> that straight when you put it on GIS. So from Fall River to Dartmouth, it's about four, four and a half miles um, is the red line. So that's the project that we're, we're talking about. You see some light green and dark green overlays. That's those are showing the wetlands and the protected, permanently protected open space along Route 6. Um, so when you get an idea of you know, what we're talking about, um, that, that is the project. So why provide water and sewer uh, to the north end along Route 6? Um, three critical important reasons that Deborah and I are gonna walk through this afternoon. Um, the first is that it improves the health of the Westport River. EPA came in, the federal government came in and told Westport, you have a limit on the Westport River by how much nitrogen can be in there. That is, that is, a, that is a federal limit, and that was established in two 2019. Um, the town, through the planning board, did this great, comprehensive, robust, integrated, targeted water management plan. Um, and it identified septic system as the number one source the biggest source of nitrogen to the Westport River was septic systems. The most densely part of the town, the bread and cheese watershed or along Route 6, you have very old, you have very densely developed homes there all on septic systems. So the plan, there was, there's a lot of science um, and planning that the town has done to identify septic systems as the primary source. So by running sewer down Route 6 is you're allowing homes to then connect to sewer as opposed to using on-site septic systems and discharging nitrogen to the river. So that's the first benefit. The second one is it protects public health. There are a lot of contaminated wells and there is real Board of Health data that shows bacteria contamination and nitrate contamination in individual drinking water wells in the north end. Um, and the last one is the, you know, the town plan has said for almost 20 years now, and I think, Jim, you found a 2006 town meeting um, vote that was unanimous that said that, you know, bringing sewer and water down Route 6 was a priority for the town. Um, and so that those three things, we're going to walk through them in more detail. 
So, um, as <laughs> I love these drawings, um, we do also need to mention that there are quite a number of cesspools in the routes along the Route 6 corridor, and those don't treat waste at all. So that's um, that's one of the the things that we'll be addressing. Um, the other thing that that we're looking at here is that once nitrogen enters into the river, it depletes the oxygen, it causes algal, algal blooms, and it eventually will impact our eelgrass population, which is really ultimately a measure of the health of the river, is how much eelgrass do we have? Is it going down? Is it staying stable? Is it going up? So um, while we do all um, you know, have <laughs> septic needs, we just really need to think about how we can address them. This is a much more community-wide solution rather than a home-by-home-by-home home by home solution. And I think while people are worried about costs, ultimately it's going to be much less expensive to pay, to tie into the sewer than it would be to, um, to build your own septic system on site. Um, Tom, why don't we hold the questions to the end, if you don't mind. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, and just to, to, to clarify, um, so I think it's, it's pretty clear that cesspools, they don't remove any kind of pollution. If you have a modern contemporary Title V system, you are treating for bacteria, because that's why you know, we have Mount Flushmore's um, mm -hmm. in our yards, because that's separating raw wastewater from groundwater, so it's allowing the bacteria and the viruses to die before it reaches groundwater. But they are not designed to treat for nitrogen. Title V was never designed to treat for nitrogen. So while you're, doing, while you're eliminating bacteria through a Title V system, you are not eliminating the nitrogen. So that's, a real, that's an important point that, that folks understand. So I think this is your okay. slide. Um, so as I, this is just uh, illustrating what I've already said is that the largest concentrations of old septic systems are along the Route 6 corridor. Um, this is a map. This is data taken from the, that the Board of Health pulled together about ages of systems um, in the town of Westport. So there's a series of red and purple dots on this map. The red dots are known cesspools. The purple dots are probable cesspools or septic systems that were constructed before 1974-ish. And so as you can see, the majority of the really old septic systems and cesspools, not, a lot of them not treating for any kind of pollution and none of them treating for nitrogen, um, are in the north end and a lot of them right along uh, the Route 6 corridor. Um, so eliminating those and sending it to a Fall River for wastewater treatment, um, it will improve the health of the river because everything that's happening on Route 6 is flowing through groundwater and surface water to the river. Um, so we've really talked about this already. The, the public health improvements are about um, providing clean water to numerous communities. There really are many more homes up along Route 6 that I didn't realize people are not today drinking their own water. They are testing too high for nitrites and um, I think there's probably more people that haven't tested their water that are um, drinking it and may not be the best health decision that they could make. Um, we already have a number of homes uh, along Route 6 that are receiving water because we know that their, water, their wells were not bringing uh, potable water to them. And that's um, a corridor that, that is, I think is 150 homes, is that right? Yeah. About 164. Yeah, like so that. already, hi Gail, um, already there are a number of homes that are not, uh, not able to drink their own water. Um, and again, from data from the Board of Health, Sorry that this map isn't quite as clear. Um, you can see, so going through the two squares at the top is Route 6. And so these clusters, those are reported contaminated wells. So for whatever reason, there was a failed septic system which triggers um, a drinking water test. This is data that's been reported to <coughs> the Board of Health that showed contamination of bacteria and or nitrogen, uh, concentrations that are too high and unhealthy to drink. These are only reported data. This is only reported data. There's likely a lot more out there. 
So question one would allow, would bring clean drinking water down Route 6 to these homes. Um, I think everyone's worried about too much economic development, and I share that worry, really. But I think that we have, um, we have opportunities for redevelopment of some of these car lots that are just really like nowhere zones. And, um, and we, the town really needs the tax revenue. Um, we're struggling, as you know, to just pay for our basic services in, in Westport. And if we were able to, to bring in more commercial, as, as Senator Roderick says, more commercial funding, it would really help the town to, to address its own needs at this point. There are an awful lot of uh, wetlands that are protected along Route 6 that can't be built upon. Um, so, yeah. It's a little hard to see. <laughs> a little hard to see. Sorry about that. I'll walk you through it. This is where you all get to throw tomatoes at us because this is where we talk about how much it costs. Um, so how much is it going to cost? How and how are how is the town structured um, the financing to pay for it? So the top box, the water and sewer, um, as Deborah said, it is fully designed. Water and sewer trunk line from Fall River to Dartmouth is fully designed. Um, based on those those engineered designs, they come up with an estimated probable cost. That is just about $35 million um, estimated. $30 million of that pays for sewer. $5 million of it pays for water. So that's the $35 million. So we'll start with how the town is proposing to finance the $30 million for the sewer. It's by 20% betterments. So the Property owners along Route 6 are receiving a benefit from this project. It improves the property, it increases the value of the property along Route 6 if you have the opportunity to connect to sewer and water um, at the street. If you have a septic system, it doesn't, it doesn't increase the value. If you have the opportunity to connect to sewer, it does increase the value of the property. So it's considered a betterment. So the town is proposing that 20% of the total cost of the sewer is going to be paid for by the property owners along Route 6. So that is $6 million um, will be paid for by the property owners on Route 6. It will be in the form of um, what the town is calling equivalent dwelling units. And instead of going into a whole explanation, an equivalent, one equivalent dwelling unit is equal to one single family home. And so one EDU is charged just about $10,000 to be able to have the opportunity to connect to a uh, sewer outside the home. If you are a multifamily, you are more than one EDU. So if you're a four family home, you would maybe a four EDU. So you would be a 40,000. Um, so multifamily units pay more than a single family unit um, along the, and businesses would pay more along Route 6. Um, so that's how, so that's 20% that's of the project. The remaining 80% is paid for townwide. Because really this project has townwide benefits, so everybody in town should contribute to this overall project because everybody benefits from it. So 80% of the rest of the cost, so about $24 million, is spread across um, the property owners uh, townwide. And then with respect to the water, because public health is so critical uh, to the residents of Westport, the $5 million that pays for the rest of the water down Route 6 will be paid for by, um, over, paid townwide as well. So I hope that was clear. No tomatoes yet. So what does this really mean for um, individual homeowners? And I'm gonna leave this slide up for a little bit so people can really take a look at it. So for the town-wide cost of providing sewer and water down Route 6, that 80% um, cost of the project, if your home, the average assessed value of homes in Westport is $550,000. So your taxes would go up um, by uh, $550,000. So your annual tax increase would be $231 a year. So $231 a year to help pay for this project, uh, that's less than $5 a week. 
if your home is worth two is, is assessed at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you're looking at two dollars a week. If your home is one point five million dollars, you're looking at an annual increase to taxes at six hundred and fifty one dollars um, or twelve and twelve dollars a week. So that's the cost to individual homeowners to pay for this project. Um, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, I think you should do this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've heard a lot um, from folks in Westport about, you know, where is all of this free federal grant money and can we get grants to pay for this? Um, and so I want to walk through you know, what opportunities the town has and which ones they have been really successful um, uh, at securing. So the federal bipartisan infrastructure law um, post COVID was signed by the president, approved by Congress, um, that dumped $1.2 billion um, of federal money into the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for water and sewer projects. That money went to the state revolving loan fund. So that money, that, that, that federal infrastructure money didn't come to the state in form of grants, it came to the state in form of loans. Um, these are low interest yeah. loans mm -hmm. um, and there is some loan forgiveness, forgiveness available, but I just wanna make clear that there is not a <laughs> magic pot of federal money uh, where the towns, whether it's Westport or Falmouth or, or anybody, can just um, get free money from. Um, the next opportunity, federal budget earmarks, extremely difficult to get. Um, despite how difficult and the challenges around that, I am like amazed that Westport was able to secure nearly a million dollars of a federal earmark uh, for, available as of July um, this year uh, to help pay for this project. Um, so kudos to the town. Uh, when they, you know, when I learned that uh, they were going for it, I'm like, oh, you shouldn't count that as, as money that you're going to get. You're never going to get a federal earmark in the federal budget. But they did, what Town of Westport did, and it's amazing. Um, and then there's a bunch of state grants that the town continues to pursue. So what I wanted to walk through, looking at a worst case financing scenario and best case financing scenario through free money. I'm not talking about loans, I'm talking about free grant money. Right now, if the project is worth $35 million, the town has already secured almost a million dollars in free federal money through an earmark. That's, that's great, so now it brings down uh, the 34 million. So that big table uh, that, we, um, that we put up before, all of, the, um, all of that now comes down. So we've already decreased the cost of the project just by um, that $1 million. So that's your worst case scenario is $34 million. The best case scenario, if everything comes through uh, that the town is applying for, um, you have $35 million, we get the $1 million earmark, we're at $34 million. Uh, because of the success with this earmark, the town has then applied uh, for a $5 million earmark for next year for this project. Because I'm not a big optimist, I'm not gonna give the town credit, I'm not gonna pretend they get $5 million here, I'll get $3.5 million because I'm super cautious. Um, that brings your amount to finance down to $29 million. And then if you get loan forgiveness uh, through the state revolving fund, that is, that's another $2.9 million of free money. So then you're looking at $26 million of financing. That's off, that's off the top. So everybody's contribution then comes down. It continues to come down. Maury, what did I do wrong? Late breaking news. Yesterday afternoon, we actually got a, lit a letter in writing confirming that we're getting a $4 million PFAS grant. And of that $4 million, probably $1.5 million we can apply to or subtract from yep. the cost of the Route 6 uh, water. Yeah. So. That's, so that even, that brings $34 million down to $32 million and then it makes the $26 million, uh, $24 million. So Congratulations to the town. That's really great news. Okay, um, so just to be really clear about this, this is the, this, I think of this like the spine, you know, we've got to make the spine happen in order to tie in neighborhoods, but this won't service a ton of homes yet because 
This will just be straight down Route 6 the whole way. Um, but we've got uh, the costs. Um, we were talking about this the other day. <coughs> the cost to homeowners are much less than <coughs> if you have to put in a D-night system. Excuse me. Not only do you have to pay for the D-night system to go in, you also have to pay for the annual maintenance costs of that system. You have to have it um, checked at least once a year. You have to do the sampling and <coughs> hire a company that does that. Um, and the, the cost of connecting to a, a, the home to a sewer is really much lower than, than all of those costs that I described. So the user fees are, um, again, these are projections, but you can see that these are not in, enormously um, <laughs> onerous. And I wanted to just take one second to ask Gail, who's a resident of, um, of this corridor, um, to describe her a, for a moment just a little bit about her family has been living there for 30 plus years and dealing with the, uh, the challenges of that community. Yes, hi everybody. You might want to come up here so oh, they can sure. hear you. Okay. Here. Okay, hi everybody. I've been living in the, oh sorry. <laughs> I've been living in uh, Westport for uh, almost 30 years now. And uh, we moved into this nice cape on East Briggs Road. And we uh, passed the um, cesspool process through the health department. And they said, you don't have to worry about it now until you sell it. That it'll have to upgrade the sewer. So we're like, OK, good. And we were young, working, two young children. And so we've been thinking about that's how it's going to go until recently we heard that there was going to be an effort to make everybody switch to sewers, septic systems. And um, we heard some of the numbers like everybody has. And so we need a cesspool and the nitrate. And so we've heard to budget about 50000 dollars for that process excavation and everything uh so we were like oh like everybody in town what are we going to do and then we realized that um, there was going to be an option and what the point i'm going to make which is a very important is about 10 years ago um my neighbors were putting uh buying a house that they had a split well and split septic system and uh, so they had to buy right, since somebody buys it, have to put it in. So we uh, went through that process with the neighbors. And uh, long story short, it ended up closer to our well than their well um, by five feet. And so they had to pay to test the water. And for three years, we kept seeing the water going from eight, nine, up to about almost 13, 13 almost 14. And the, the Board of uh, Health had said to us, we recommend that you um, buy bottled water or a filtering system, and you shouldn't be drinking it anymore. So we were left with this situation where we've had to, uh, we have one bedroom for, uh, for, for four people for the last, Oh, one bathroom. Thank one, you. One bathroom for people. <laughs> it's a little more dire. Than it. <laughs> yes, that's right. So the kids were little. That was fine. But then they, as they got older, and we're both working, trying to get in and out of the house and get to places in time, it become a problem. So if we do, so my point was, Sean, I forgot his last name, on the Board of Health recommended that it was a problem in town that all those. Uh, properties are, you know, contaminated, have l high nitrate levels that if ever a system was coming through to tie in to sewer, that would solve all that problem. Now, that was 10 years ago. So I, what I'm saying about my neighbor was we have three, uh, five lots back in the 50s. But collectively, it's less than one acre, which is the current code for a house. But our neighbor only had one lot. So it was a postage stamp. And then, so what happened is things were moving around and it ended up 
we didn't show up at the meeting because we wanted to be good neighbors and it got decided that they were going to shift it and it became four feet closer to our well after i had been to a meeting said i'm okay to split it and so you know that brings up problems with neighbors too i just see that this tying into the water system and septic system would be beneficial specifically for my neighbors in the neighborhood in the north end um, so that's how I feel about it. Just on a side note, I used to work in a water department in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. So I'm well aware how that pro uh, process goes and the meter readings. And, and I remember people not really complaining much about their, their uh, systems. And uh, in fact, I worked in the water department and they were so proud of their water. It was the best in, in almost New England not only the state, but New England. So I, I'm really looking forward to this going through and it would benefit us and give us the opportunity to, you know, put even a half bath, we would be happy. <laughs> so thank you. Gail. All right, thank you, Gail. Uh, okay. talking about with the, um, the, the PFAS grant, which is to service the Mac, what they call the Macomber Loop, which is the um, area around the Macomber School. And, um, and this, will, this grant um, will help to uh, address the, the water quality that they have in, that, in, the, in the school and in the neighborhoods surrounding the school. So the, the $4 million that Maury just announced is now secured to bring, to help pay for water down Route 6, the red line, and then the blue line there is the Macomber Loop. And so there's grant free money to help pay for that. But that doesn't happen unless question one passes right. Right. and we can build the water and sewer infrastructure down, down Route 6. We're going to hold questions to the end if you don't mind. Thanks. So we're, we are almost done. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring up the point, we wanted to bring up the point of the use it or lose it. So the town has done a lot of work to get this free money. Um, and what happens um, if, it, if question one doesn't pass um, is that the, the town actually gives up about $10 million of money that they've secured. The first one's the federal earmark that's already secured. Um, so we say goodbye to the one, $1 million. Pretty good chances of getting another earmark. If you got it this year, it's good chances you get it next year, that $3.5 million. It's not yet secured, but we were hoping for it. Well, there's no chance for that either if this doesn't go through uh, next week. Um, the 10% loan forgiveness, um, the town has already secured a low interest loan uh, from the state and it has the potential for 10% low in, um, loan forgiveness. Uh, we don't get that either. And then this grant that Maury just announced, um, we don't get. So this actually gets to the septic system yep. issue. Um, so I think what we're, you know, I think we've, you've, you've heard it from us over and over again that this is going to be, for individual homes, it's going to be a more health providing opportunity, it's going to be more affordable, and it's going to improve eventually the water that enters into the Westport River. Those are all three things that are going to be addressed by this. Um, if we don't do this now, you know, what, what's going to happen? I, it's just going to get more expensive. I mean, I think that's, you know, that's the way it is. If we had done it back in 2006 when Jim Whiten was talking about it, I think the cost was what? Do you remember, Jim? There was no cost. Okay. All right. Um, so these are, um, these are just some of the, the kind of scary, scary items about getting a denitrifying septic system installed today. Um, and I think, um, you know, while we really would encourage people to make that choice if they have the opportunity, um, I don't think this is really an affordable choice for most families. So, and I want to recognize something that the, the Board of Health has done. Um, they passed a regulation that required, I, as we discussed this afternoon, cesspools are not treating for nitrogen or bacteria, and so those need to get upgraded. And the um, Board of Health has a requirement that if you have a cesspool, you have to upgrade to at least a Title V system. 
Um, that cost is, you know, upgrading accessible to a Title V. I'll give you a range between twenty and thirty-five thousand dollars. That's going accessible to Title V. Um, the Board of Health required folks to upgrade by 2026 uh, to get rid of the cesspools in town. Um, in anticipation of this passing, the Board of Health recognizes that folks who have the opportunity to connect to sewer, that's a better option than spending twenty to thirty-five thousand dollars on a new septic system. So they extended that requirement in good faith to 2028 in hopes that this passes. Um, if this doesn't pass and DEP comes back. DEP is going to require everyone in town to upgrade not to Title V, but to the best available nitrogen reducing septic systems. And just the treatment unit itself, um, the coalition does a lot of work on the Cape installing these systems. The best treatment today is costing just the treatment is $29,000 plus excavation, which is fifteen dollars to $30,000, and then the engineering costs and this isn't, doesn't even account for the operation and maintenance of the system um, on an annual basis. I mean, you're looking fifty to $64,000 for a nitrogen-reducing septic system. So those are the cost differentials that, we're, that the town is, look, is facing. So we had a couple of questions, and I wanted to just say also that we still need your help um, in getting out the vote. Um, and if you're not a registered voter in Westport, you can still talk to your friends and neighbors who are. Um, we need help getting signs held like at the, at the polling station so that people are kind of reminded that they can vote. Um, and I've got a, a, a thing to pass around if anybody's willing to go out and hold up the sign. We'd really appreciate that on Tuesday. John Borden wanted to make a statement from his group. And then um, we have Tom Leonard had a question and Gabe had a question. Um, but thank you all for being here today and um, for making yourselves available to think about this. I'm going to turn the lights on for you. Yeah. Okay. Do I need this? You can need the stand for podium. I'll hold this. There you go. Hi, uh, John Borden. I'm from the Westport Shellfish Advisory Committee. Um, I'm all for the vote. The committee had a discussion in our minutes of our last meeting. I'll just give a brief copy of what they talked about. And it was um, yeah. to approve the. No, only for the oh, to approve, approve the Route 6 sewer and water project. It's for the benefit of the East Branch of the Westport River. And by reducing runoff and sewer contamination, we recognize the value of the water quality and the benefit of the health of the Westport River as well as the health of the historic oyster beds in our multi-million dollar shellfish industry that is in a, a big decline because of water quality. Um, all you have to do is see the marshes. You see that um, scallops, cogs are all in decline because of algae blooms and this project is the first what I feel is a major step avoiding a crisis down the road with a collapse of the fishery. Thank you. Um, okay, we had a couple of questions out there and um, we have a couple of um, folks as well. I didn't see Steve Olette, he just came in. Um, he's also a board of select person and he's running select board member. <laughs> He is also uh, running for uh, Paul Schmidt's seat, um, so that's exciting. Um, and we had a question a while back from Tom Leverett. Yeah, I write grants from uh, several organizations in West Block. My question was answered about the additional grant available. It came up recently. PFAS, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. All right, that was easy. Um, okay. The Board of Health has said that we have to upgrade to these denitrifying systems. I'm, well, or, I'm just saying if the homeowners on Room 6, if they go to upgrade, they do denitrifying systems. Do they have the amount of area necessary to the distance from well to septic? That's, that's Gail's Which problem. is, I think, what Gail was saying. Right. So Mine's those systems will not be work yeah. in those particular areas. Would a homeowner be allowed to do a tight tank? Not that that is a solution financially because it would have to continue to be 
pumped out, right. but would they be allowed to put a tight tank in? That's been asked of me from other people. Uh, generally not. Um, but I want to clarify that um, the cesspool upgrade requirement is just to Title V. Right. We don't require the next level to a denitrifying system unless um, in a case what's called maximum feasible compliance. If, and that's probably the case in some places in, in North Westport, if the lot is small, those postage size stamp lots, um, and the well is less than 100 feet away and demonstrates contamination, so it has to be tested as part of the septic plan upgrade, um, then one of the, we uh, may require a denitrifying septic system because of the, if it has nitrate contamination. Um, or in some cases would allow treatment on the well. Um, so it's not a, a blanket requirement to upgrade to denite. Um, tight tanks are, are sort of last resort. They're only allowed in certain limited circumstances, so probably not. Um, there may be, an engineer might be able to make the case depending on the specifics of a lot, um, but generally not. I have to tell you a fun, one funny thing that, that I never heard of. Um, when I was talking with Senator Rodericks, and we didn't put this in the film, he said that at one time, I guess it was in the 1920s, you saved up the tags from your tea bags, and if you saved up enough of them, you could get one of these tiny lots, so they're called tea lots, which I just thought was really interesting. I mean, what a piece of history that is. Um, and, you know, the tea lots were, were obviously, like your neighbors, teeny tiny. Yeah. Um, Okay, another question, yeah, um, Constance and Gay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, when you had the map up, I, the current water line that comes down the sticks goes as far as Greenwood Terrace, correct, which is just past Davis Road. Was that Davis Road to service one or two neighborhoods up in that area? I'm, I'm not. Yes. Yeah, okay. So are each of those homeowners, all of those businesses already tied into the water line yeah. and paying a betterment? There's no better than the water. There's no better. Oh, okay, but they're paying they're paying a water bill right. towards yeah. okay. Yeah. And they were and they, were they required to tie in the when state, it went by? The state did. Because we had contamination, contamination from the resolve site in Dartmouth. Uh, and years ago, I think it was Temex, there was a the to, a toxin that really initiated the water line to begin with. Before the before the um, resolve. Before resolve. But again, I just didn't know if they were already tied in that far. So that water line would just go down to 177, continue all the way down with sewer added to it. Right. Um, Constance had a question. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I was just wondering if there's, if there's any way to decouple the voting for um, a, a water sewer system from the bylaw changes, or because I feel that the bylaw changes, some of them really open up some development that we might really regret, like um, 15, yeah, 15, uh, up to 15 units per acre, and, um, and then minimizing setbacks, and also uh, opening up for huge industries like um, fulfillment centers, I guess like Amazon, the one that's up you know, the road a bit, and, and then data processing centers, which uh, use enormous amounts of electricity and water, which is obviously very important in the for. So I'm just wondering, is there, in voting for a water sewer system, would that mean that <coughs> we would open ourselves up to that the sort of development that uh, appears to be being proposed in the, uh, the bylaw, the zoning bylaw? You want to answer that, Jim? Yeah. Jim Whiten is the chair of the planning board. So the the, the question uh, is, does the sewer mean that the zoning article would have to pass? No. Uh, the zoning articles per town meeting are separate from any other article. So you can pass this vote. When this goes to town meeting, you can pass this. Tuesday, you can pass this. And it has no effect on the zoning bylaws. So, so just to be clear, if we were to bring water sewer into the zoning bylaws, it wouldn't mean that this sort of massive development would be allowed that when 
I read the, the new zoning um, bylaw regulations and changes for the gateway up there and all that, that, that seems to indicate is where the planning board wants to go with this. So, so if we were to get water and sewer, it would not, you're saying it would not open us up to, to those sorts of developments. It, it, I, I just want to be clear that if we get water and sewer, uh, the existing businesses that are on Route 6 could expand using our current bylaws, and they, you could get better development than we have now, which we have very little good development up there. So, and that has been the focus for 20 years of planning and town meeting votes to better the economic development of the Northwest Port. And the bylaws that are in the current town meeting warrant are to help that process along, but you're gonna get it anyway. If you get water and sewer, you're gonna get better development, you're gonna get maybe some restaurants, you're gonna get places that need water and sewer, and you're gonna get fewer car lots, you're gonna re get redevelopment. And that is something that would be controlled by our current bylaws or by our new bylaws if they pass. So I don't see any huge uh, boom. You're not gonna get Dartmouth uh, in, along Route 6 because we just don't have the land. Well, the new, the new bylaws would it, 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 it would not. It, that's not part of this discussion, but it would not. It would. It, it would not make this Dartmouth. We don't have the area for retail that you're talking about in Dartmouth. We don't have the area along Route Six that's visible, and it's not going to happen. From the planner's perspective, it's never going to happen. We may get like a CVS we have on Route Six. That was something that the the uh, neighborhoods around there signed a petition to the planning board when it was put in that they wanted it. They wanted the CVS. And I think you could get things of that nature, but you're not gonna get Home Depot. You're not gonna get Walmarts. You're not gonna get any of those things. Excuse me, not even with the new bylaws. It's an area that can be developed. That doesn't mean that anybody's going to come and do that. So, okay, anyway. We're getting a little bit off topic here, so um, let's, let's pull it back and um, uh, just see if uh, folks that have been working on this for many moons would like to add anything else. Um, mm. Lori or Bob, d d you don't have to, but if you have something else you'd like to add, please stand up here and testify. Well, um, <laughs> I, I guess I guess we we should um, just uh, touching on uh, uh, the question that was uh, just asked. Um, they are uh, the each each article is a completely separate article. You could vote for the sewer and water, and not vote for the zoning. You could vote for one of the pieces of the zoning changes and not the other piece of the zoning change. Every article stands on its own. They are not. They 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 are related but independent. So that there is no voting for the sewer doesn't mean you vote for the zoning. You, they're 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 completely independent. Um, it, just to you know, sort of uh, think about what we're doing here. What, what problem are we trying to solve? What, why, are we, why, are we, why are we suggesting to the town meeting that, um, that they appropriate $35 million? So we, you know, the, the stuff you just heard. Is, is, there a, is, is there a problem? Yeah, there's a real problem. Um, people, people don't have, you, you know, you, you, you heard. People uh, can't expand their septic system. They have non-compliant septic systems. They have cesspools. They face, uh, when they sell their property, they face reaching in their pocket for forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 that comes out of the deal. Uh, you, you know, you, you know, 
the town. You know, forty or fifty million dollars, forty or fifty thousand dollars is probably the, you know, the residual value in some of these properties. So that, you know, there's the economic hardship. There's the public health aspects of the, the PFAS, the contaminated wells. Well, how do we know that? Well, because we test public drinking water by, uh, you know, supplies, and and they all have PFAS problems. We we test, um, as you can see, we the Board of Health tests some drinking water wells, and we know that they all have bacterial and nitrogen uh, 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 contamination. So it's a public health problem. There's also the risk that all of us face if we don't act, that is, we don't do something. Then we face the uh, DEP will come back to us because we, we have Westport Rivers and listed EPA DEP impaired water. That is, it has a nitrogen. It, it is impaired by the, the pollution we put into it, and that is both bacteria. We, we, we get the shellfish beds closed frequently when it rains, and and, and we, can't, we can't eat the shellfish if you go up the river. We used to be able to do that. And so we have an obligation to meet the standards that EPA set. That is that all of us have the obligation. The town has the obligation, and we, we have to do that. So that's not an obligation we can dodge. And then there's the potential for economic development. That is, can we, can we convert? car lots into restaurants? Can we, can we take, can we provide sewer and water to people's homes so that she can put on her half bath? Can we, can we do those kinds of things that actually bring economic value, increase the value of people's homes? All of those things are, are possible. Well, if those are the problems, does, does the sewer address those problems? Yeah, the sewer addresses those problems. It actually doesn't reduce the nitrogen a little. Every house we connect to the sewer and send to Fall River reduces the nitrogen to zero. That is, it goes to Fall River for treatment. It comes completely out of the river. It's not 50%, it's not a third of the nitrogen, it's 100% of the nitrogen is removed. We, if we connect them to public water supply, the contamination that exists in the ground no longer represents a health risk to them because they're drinking <laughs> the, the North Watupa Pond treated water supply. So there is a problem. The sewer and water addresses the problem. Well, is it, is it a problem we have to solve now? Why, why, you know, why are we going to town meeting now? We're going to town meeting now because the fish are biting. When do you fish? You fish when the fish are biting. So what does that mean? Well, you know, the bill and the infrastructure money and the billions of dollars, and, and, you know, everything in the slide, you know, that's sitting, this slug of money that came from both the APA recovery money and the, the bipartisan infrastructure bill is now sitting in the grant and loan funds in the state. Oh, what, what is that? They are roughly four times what the usual contribution is. So now there's a pot of money you can chase, and we've been doing that. So that's why acting now is there's a chance to chase money. Why chase, why chase money when there's very little of it? and every town is competing for it. We now have this. Well, does that, does that go on forever? No, it does not go on forever. The infrastructure, the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the IPA recovery bills were planned by uh, Congress to help us recover from the impacts of having the COVID outbreak and the depression in the, econ the economic hit that that happened. Well, what does that mean? Five years. The money was put in for five years. Where are we in the five years? We've got two years left. So it's, 
we, we are, we are, if we don't do it now, the two years are gone. And if we don't vote now, the money that we, some of the monies we did secure, we're going to walk away from. And I, for one, don't want to have a conversation with, with uh, uh, Representative Keating next year that said, Th thanks for the million bucks you got us. Uh, uh, we decided we, we didn't need it. W would you give us five bucks, five million next year? You know, what, what kind of a conversation is that going to be? He's going to say, listen, I, I went and got you, you know, it's hard to get this money. I got you a million bucks for the sewer. Now you decided not to do it? You know, we, we, we can't put ourselves in that situation. So um, this, this, is, this is really the time to act. There is a real problem. The sewer and water addresses that problem. We, we've advanced ourselves where we can do that. The contracts, there are three contracts. They are out to bid now. Uh, 54 individuals, companies, individuals, have taken out the bid documents. 12 of those, at least 12 of those, are major you know, utility construction companies. So th there's interest. We're big enough to look like uh, you know, really getting some decent bids in this. And we'll have those bids before town meeting. So there's a problem. The, the town has acted to address that problem. And we believe it is the, the, the time to do it now. So that's, that, that, that's essentially the bottom line of this. Can I just say? Mandatory or voluntary? What? Hook up. Voluntary. It's voluntary. Hook up. Oh, the hookups, the hookups are voluntary. Uh, uh, the pain, the betterments are not voluntary. Connecting is voluntary. You don't have to. You don't have to do that, or, and you can delay doing that. Uh, the reason uh, the betterments are once the, once the, the the water comes to you without benefits, it's all paid out of the general uh, fund. Uh, the um, the the sewer when it in, comes in front of your property, as soon as the sewer is operational, then the betterment is charged to your property. And you, you, you have the option of paying that over 20 years on your tax bills. We had a question in the back. Is there a cost or commitment to the city of Fall River for extending or hooking up to their existing yes. line? Or Westport yeah. O Fall River something? Yes. No. Yeah, yes. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, we have to pay for the water that we use and we have to pay for the sewage that we use. But there's no, there's no. The, 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 there's not a charge for building our sewers in the town. Did I, did I understand the question? Yeah, uh, Bob, let me just um, answer that. Fall River does charge $330 for a water hookup and $330 for a sewer hookup. And then we would probably add something to that uh, just for our own expenses. The numbers we're using is nine, you know, 900 uh, times two, around 1800. So, so yeah, we don't it's, have it, no, it's, it's a one-time connection mm -hmm. cost. So to answer your question, we, we already have so you, a, a, a sewer agreement uh, for three sewer Fall River treats it. And, um, no, so so you have a, so water and sewer go by your home. Um, you want to connect. There's a one-time connection cost of nine hundred and ninety dollars for water and one for sewer. To, part of it goes to Fall River and then part of it goes to Westport because they're managing the Westport side of the system. Then there are your user fees, like your, your utility, your electric, your electric or your gas bill. Um, the more water you use, the more you pay. The average, I had a slide up there that it was the average, I think it's $137 a month for and water and sewer. Too. And it goes to Westport, which then pays their bill to Fall River. Hi, just final comments. Bob, I think, is a, an extremely articulate person, and he did express a lot of the, the ideas that we have been uh, presenting. But um, I'd I just like to, um, from a personal standpoint, 
tell you that we've been working on water and sewer for 20 years. I was on the, the old water and sewer committee from 2004 to 2010. We thought we had it, some momentum back in 2004 and 5, but it, it did not it did not succeed. Uh, we had a water resources management committee from uh, 2012 to 2018, and, and we did, did nothing. Then the planning board, you know, with the targeted integrated water resource plan and with the TMDL, and we, we, we got some momentum going, and uh, we got some funding. We got some a million dollars of ARPA funding from our state senator, Michael Rodericks, and we have been using that for design and engineering. We have had an infrastructure oversight committee for the last two years. I've, I've, I'm on it. Bob is our vice chair. Steve Ouellette in the back here is our, our chairman. And we are very excited about the, the stars really aligning at this point. Bob made reference to this. But all the stars are aligning here. It's federal funding. It's the TMDL. It's the Targeted Integrated Water Resource Plan. And it is the enthusiasm of not just um, the environmentalists of the South End, but of the business interests in the North End. And I am hopeful, I'm confident, not totally confident, but hopeful that uh, this time around we will not experience another 2004, that this time around we will have a union of the South End and the North End in the town of Westport to move this project forward. Somebody said it's not rocket scientists. Folks, the Romans had it, and here we are 2,000 years later, and we're going to get it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I think we're, we're just about wrapping up. I wanted to say again that if anybody's willing to um, take a sign, I have the signs over here and the legs over there for the signs. If you're willing to come out to the polls and, and uh, you know, do your thing, we could really use your help. We've only got... Uh, like one and a half people signed up for a shift, so that's that's a little bit scary. Um, but uh, also, just talk to your voting friends and neighbors. Um, we really need to get this. We need to get this passed. Um, it's just been a long time coming. Um, if this passes, it still goes to town meeting, correct? Does yeah. that require yeah. a two-thirds vote at town meeting? Yes. Yeah. It yeah. does. Okay, so we're, we're halfway there. <laughs> Um, I encourage you to take home some of the snacks that I brought because I'm really demoralized about all your lack of attention. Um, and thank you all for coming out today.